What can, yeah. what, and I know you've talked, I think it was a four-point plan or something you've been talking about in the media lately, but I wanted to hone it down specifically to what can the president and or U.S. government and or Fed do that would actually help the economy in the near to medium term? Meaning, I understand that there's maybe banking issues we want to address so that we don't have another crisis happen again in five years or whatever, but are there actual things they can do that would help increase GDP or slow down the decrease in GDP and or help employment? Very much so. First, we have to understand monetary policy will not get us out of the mess. And all this discussion about monetary policy is a And when you say monetary policy, you mean low interest anything, rates? Or? Anything that the Fed can do. Okay. I mean, the Fed is very good at creating problems, not so good at resolving them. Okay. So QE3 won't help. Which Chris wanted. You know what? Why don't you ask your... I'm going to swing to Chris a second. What was your, your, your quantitative easing question? Yeah, I was mostly curious what your thoughts were on, you know, what, what have we, uh, what did we get with QE1, QE2, and why would we want QE2? And explain what it is, what quantitative easing is to somebody who doesn't get it. Well, QE2 like was the Fed's purchase of long-term government bonds expanding, in a sense, the money supply, um, trying to drive down long-term interest in the belief that doing so would inject, stimulate, uh, inject money into the economy and stimulate the economy. And did it? There's a debate about it. Uh, uh, what is clear is it didn't have the magnitude of the effect that was hoped. It didn't have an effect that was durable. Right. If it had an effect, it was very short-lived. Okay. Uh, the major, the channels through which it was hoped uh, that it would have an effect were several. One was that it would lead to more lending. Didn't really happen, partly because we haven't fixed the banking system. Okay. Uh, another channel is lower interest rates. Lower interest rates typically do not have much effect on investment in a period such as the one we're uh, in. Many firms have excess capacity. 40% of all investment before the crisis was in real estate. Real estate prices are down 30-40%. Why would anybody invest even if the interest rate were negative? Right. So you're not going to throw good money after bad even at a very low interest rate. So the concept was uh, fundamentally flawed. Large firms are sitting on large amounts of cash, and slightly lower interest rates are not going to make any difference. Small firms, many of them are in need of money, but we, the Fed, the administration didn't fix the banking system, the, kind, the part of the banking system that lends to SME, small and medium-sized right. enterprises, and even if they had, most SME lending is collateral-based. The collateral is real estate. Real estate values are down 30, 40 percent. So even if the banking system were okay. fixed, it would not uh, necessarily lead to the hope for increase in lending. Okay. The two channels that may have had a little effect was that uh, slightly lower interest rates on bonds might have encouraged. Uh, speculation in the stock market, driven up stock market prices, and the hope was that higher stock market prices might induce people to uh, consume more. Now, the fact is that since it was pre-announced that this was going to be a temporary intervention, most rational individuals would realize that any boost to the stock market <laughs> might <laughs> <set> be <laughs> temporary. And right. why would you go out having right. a right. consumption binge right. on the basis right. of a very volatile stock market? Right. And since then, we've seen the stock market prices have come down. Okay. So, right. so it would only be somebody whatever. foolish right. 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 that would have right. gone out and consumed on the basis of the temporary boost to the stock market prices. Right. What may have had some effect was the attempt at competitive devaluation. Lower interest rates lead to lower exchange rates. Okay. The U.S. Fed would never claim that it's engaged in beggar thy neighbor policies trying to lower our exchange rate, increase our exports right. at the expense of Europe or other countries around the world. But that was probably the only effect that was significant. Okay. The problem is that other countries don't like that, right. and they responded. And they responded in ways to at least limit the magnitude of the effect. 
And one of the long-term consequences of that is that it has had a very adverse effect on our relations with many other countries and uh, on, you might say, uh, capital market uh, integration. Because uh, as the money quite naturally went not to investment in the United States, but to where growth was strong in emerging markets, money went not where uh, it was needed, but where it was not needed and not wanted. These countries have put up barriers to the inflow of capital. Okay. And uh, ironically, while the U.S. has argued for years for capital market liberalization integration because of QE2, countries have put up barriers to the flow of capital. So the benefits over the medium term are probably almost negative. Finally, because the money went into uh, May have went, may have helped create bubbles, mm -hmm. asset price inflation, uh, commodity higher commodity prices. Right. It the effect of it may ricochet back to the United States in the form of higher prices. Okay. And that poses the risk of the worst of all possible situations. Uh, very little impact on U.S. economic growth, right. but a negative effect on inflation. Right. Increasing the dilemma facing the Fed, what does it do if growth remains low, right. but inflation starts to increase? Because then, then they can't increase interest rates, so they kill the economy even further. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Okay. So they may have actually been gaining for themselves a problem down the line.